Look, if you're a fan of mine, then you know that when it comes down to a true crime documentary, I'm absolutely checking it out. And with a new one premiering now, there was a no-brainer that I had to see what it was all about, and that's why I'm going to get to that review right now. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the channel today for another review. Yep, today we're reviewing a new docu-series that made its world premiere at South by Southwest, and this is Confronting a Serial Killer. Now, before I even get any further, I checked out two of the five episodes, uh, but this will be premiering on Stars. Yes, it has distribution on Stars Sunday, April 18th, so on the Stars app, you can catch it out. You can catch it any anytime that day, but... If you don't have the app, which I don't know why you wouldn't, but it also will be airing on Stars on television, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. It is a five-episode series about our hour, um, about an hours each for each of these episodes, um, and it's not it's what you don't want to miss. It, it really is because just just to bring this all full circle for you, beyond going into the details of this documentary, if you knew nothing about anything, the person attached to this. To this project, Joe Berlinger, who's done so many notable things, he's an Emmy winner filmmaker, who's done so many uh, things that you're familiar with from reputable things that it's just almost birds of a flock. Like if these were good, then this has to be good. And I'm here to say that I believe this one's even better than his previous project. But the the other notable projects that he's done, which I'm sure you all have checked out, at least at least one of them is uh, the Netflix Ted Bunny tapes, the Jeffrey Epstein Filthy Rich, and the uh, crime scene, the Van Shem Cecil Hotel, just to name a few. And so now that he's got this project, you know, I had to check it out. And I, again, I think this may be potentially better than those because, you know, considering the person we're talking about here, we're talking about America's most prolific serial killer, killing over 90 victims, strangled them for over four decades, which means this person didn't even use weapons. He used his hands as the weapons in order to take the lives of his victims bare hands in doing it and we're talking about samuel little who they said that he's killed more people than ted bunny J jeffrey delmer and joe gacy combined that's in that is nonsense but nonetheless hearing from the killer who essentially said he had a pleasure of killing like to be very graphic he said he got hard he got his heart off killing his victim Hearing it from his mouth is just unspeakable. And essentially what's happening here is because you have New York Best Time selling author Jillian Lauren, who has a past of her own, which really motivates her into wanting to understand how does the mind of a killer works? Because she sympathizes for the victims on a personal level because of just the traumas of her own past and experiences. So she decides to go, you know, neck deep in, in, into the water and wants to speak to Samuel Little himself. And they create a relationship, essentially, because, you know, essentially more of a, you tell me something, I tell you something type of thing. Because, you know, Jillian experience, and, and, and because of, you know, just her prior research, understands that the women, the victims of his crimes and many other crimes are, are basically voiceless. They're disposable. And she wants to understand the violence you know violence against women and why like it's so easily dismissed because the victims have been ignored for years and essentially discredited as less than people because of you know one either their mental state or you know their occupation i mean just because you're a prostitute doesn't mean that you your your life is a, is disposable and that's essentially how it was the the the, the justice system never gave some of these women a chance just because they lost credit credibility just because of either their prat their, their priors or you know just because of the, the circumstances of which they interacted with this killer which i you know obviously is foolishness and she's here to really bring this awful circle and to give some of these victims um a voice that they never had so it's a really remarkable thing but at the same time, too, you know, she speaks to Samuel every day. So hearing his voice pretty much recount the crimes, the numerous crimes that he's done, 
and just how he takes so much pride into it, it's the most eerie but chilling thing ever. It it really, really is. Like, and we found out a lot of information about him. Like, one, he had a boxing career in Ohio, and they considered him to be a knockout artist. And he lost one fight. And essentially, he lost a fight. He quit boxing. He took his aggression somewhere else. That somewhere else was the streets where he looked for victims all across the nation, which is... But at the same time, too, like, she also realizes that the task of speaking to him every day, that potentially she may become psychologically his last victim because um, he's an artist. He puts on a show and... You know, he's told lies for years and now these lies are being exposed because he's confessing to everything with like with no hesitation. So, you know, it, it's just a really crazy dynamic and she's doing such a noble job in getting these stories out. Uh, but again, just hearing how he killed for pleasure is so sickening. He was just so relentless. And quite frankly, he acted because he knew he could never get caught like. He, like you, when you think about this now, he had a rap sheet as long as forever, and he escaped plenty of times and, and was acquitted many times. Like the courts found him credible over these victims just because of what they were. If they were a prostitute, or just they were or because they were out late at night, they were considered incredible in court, and thus they they deemed him credible, which makes no sense at all. But, um, you know, again, you hear from her, you hear from her husband, you hear from surviving victims who hasn't spoken out in years. Um, and then you hear about the people who work these cases, law enforcement investigators from all over the country, because they did these crimes all over the country. And not to mention, like, beyond these interviews with these folks, you also get interviews with one another, like law enforcement with victims in which, like, these people, victims, I should be saying survivors, in which these people have never spoken in years. And it gets heated because you could imagine because of the lack of justice being done, what these people must be feeling when speaking to the to the people who were supposed to, you know, take this case and and, and deliver justice. And they didn't. They dropped the ball. And it's, it's it gets crazy really, really quick. Um, but again, Confronting a serial killer. Again, I watched two episodes out of the five. I cannot wait to watch the rest. This was really good. I am hooked. It is going to be premiering on Stars April 18th. This is one you do not want to miss. I think for anybody that's looking for a good binge, uh, who loves a good uh, a, a good true crime documentary like the other ones I named, uh, you know, Joe Berlinger, uh, he's, he, he's phenomenal. And this is just another project that I feel is better than the other ones that he's done. The other ones were really good. So like, I'm just let, setting the bar high, letting you know, like it's, it's that good. And it's that, it's definitely that worth going out the way for. But anyway, folks, stay tuned. Cause we got more reviews coming soon. And as always folks, thank you so much for watching. Take care.